Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Taurus in August 2020. Hello, Taurus. How are you guys doing? I hope that you are doing well. All right, friends. Welcome to August. Hope you are happy, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world. Still a pandemic out there, friends, so take all precautions that you need to to keep yourself, you know, disease free. <laughs> um, but more than that, you know, just, you know, just take care of yourselves, you know. I, I, I don't know why at this point it's even debated. So just be careful, all right? We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Taurus, uh, it's been a, it's not been a while, but uh, it's, it's, it feels like it's been a while, even though it hasn't been, because I recently did readings for you guys like last weekend. But it's been a while since I've done, you know, a monthly. That, maybe that's it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting back in the saddle, but uh, whatever. So welcome to August. Hopefully wherever you are in the world, you're doing well. You're feeling good. Everything is a happy, happy time. Uh, general announcements here before we get into the regular spiel. Uh, I will be going live here on the channel on August 8th for lion, <laughs> lion season. Yes, kind of true. Uh, for Leo season for their birthday reading. So if you happen to have a reason that you want to snoop sees on a Leo, feel free to join me on the 8th. Uh, if not, that's totally cool. You can still just drop by and say hi. But I just wanted to announce that because I announce it for all the signs that I read birthday messages for, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the regular spiel. Taurus, shuffled off camera. That's your main spread there. Going to shuffle on camera now for your outcome and your overall energy. Once all the cards are out and they're lying face up on the table, that's when the reading begins. Timestamps down in the description box if you want to get it, <laughs> if you want to jump ahead. Also down there is the information you need if you want to purchase a personal reading with me. You can find that again down in the description box. If you have any questions before you place an order with me, just feel free to ask at the, uh, emailing me at the same address and I'll answer you as soon as I can. Also, you'll see the link to my Instagram down there, Empathic Fire Tarot over on Instagram if you want to follow me you'll see it here as well boop uh and also guys just a quick shout out to my good friend vanessa she made me this bracelet she's uh, been a long time subscriber and has become a wonderful friend to me uh and i really do appreciate her and her uh tireless support so just uh, just a shout out to to a lovely uh fan and client and friend okay uh anything else no, I don't think so. So let's get into it. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Let's see the outcome for Taurus in August, please. Please show me. Taurus's outcome in August 2020. Please show me. August is kind of like a big vacation month up here, right? In the in the northern hemisphere here in the states and whatnot. And I don't know if people are taking vacations. Taurus, if you're taking a vacation in August, where are you going? Can I come with you? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, if you're going on vacation, let a girl know. I'm having vacation next week. It's technically a staycation. I was thinking of going somewhere, but I was just like, nah, never mind. But uh, hopefully I enjoy myself as I'm doing practically nothing. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, there we go. Did something flip? I don't think it did. I just want to make sure. All right. Bottom of the deck is the overall energy. All right. Let's flip what came face down. Of course, I, sh <laughs> I shaved. Oh, my God. I can't even get my words today. I cut, clipped my nails, and now it's hard for me to pick up cards again. Hey, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. What you got going on here, Taurus? This is feeling like it's not straight, but it looks pretty good on screen, so we're going to leave it alone. All right, let's see what's going on with you guys. Please show me where Taurus is in August 2020. Taurus in August 2020, please show me. All right, there we go. All right, guys, coming into August, you come in with the energy of the Six of Pentacles in reverse that's what it looks like in the upright in case you're not familiar with this deck you know return to sender is what this feels like return to sender some of you might be returning packages or or letters in the mail maybe they were improperly addressed to you um 
maybe you are rejecting messages or gifts from people i feel like something is sent out and it's not returned like a physical thing because it's pentacles so that'll apply for a few of you um you're just not welcoming gifts or you're not in the mood to or someone is returning a gift that you sent them uh and it's just like a nah we don't need that over here whatever whatever it is okay um more to the point or more um aptly um related to tarot this is about energy and effort and mindfulness affection in some cases that isn't returned to you okay um it is a general so it can go either way but i will address it as if this is happening to you taurus if it's reversed for you or a cross watcher and you know that just go ahead and flip it okay um so I feel you have put into a situation, a relationship, a job, uh, a goal, uh, some some attempt. You have made some attempt, and it wasn't responded to or 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 received graciously, and it wasn't returned. Right? It wasn't shared. So someone saw your efforts and either said, I'm not doing as much as Taurus or simply said, I'm not going to do anything. And Taurus, I think in your way, you may have stubbornly kept on with the giving or the, or the performing or the showing up or the offering or whatever you were doing. Right. And it just simply did not pay off. Um, Six of Pentacles in reverse. There is for some of you, not all of you, there is this energy of take, 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 like a, I don't know if this is the correct word. I don't, I don't think it is, uh, but they're giving me this and maybe just because of where the, of how the word sounds succubus, um, like just totally like siphoning off like, uh, yeah, like a siphon, like, <laughs> like, like if your gas tank is full and every time you go home, you know, you fill up before you drive your your car home. So it's pretty much full, but you go out to your car in the morning and you see your shit's like almost down to empty. It's like somewhere in secret or sometime after a certain amount of time, like someone has come along and taken from you. And maybe that's not the best visual but that's what this feels like. It's like I keep replenishing whatever is taken away or whatever is accepted and I keep putting more on the table or I keep offering up more and it just keeps being taken. And you might have your hand out or you might be expecting, okay, tomorrow, maybe it's something like that. <laughs> like at work, you know, a lot of workplaces, well, I guess not recently due to the pandemic, but a lot of workplaces have like communal snacks or like, you know, uh, everybody, you know, contribute to like the snack cabinet. Maybe you have like a small office and you're always bringing in chips or pretzels or whatever their kind of candies and stuff. And you throw it in the drawer, you throw it in the wherever it goes. Right. And you always do the restocking. And you might notice someone in the office who just never brings anything, but they always show up and they always take, you know. You go to a friend's house and it's a potluck dinner in the middle of a quarantine or whatever. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. And you are always showing up with something, but there's someone in your midst who doesn't ever show up with anything. They don't return in kind what you put out there, what you offer to the situation. And this person is probably more significant to you than your, you know, <laughs> not so uh, contributing uh co-worker okay this feels like since it is the six of pentacles it could be someone of uh significance in terms of friends or family oh god i just realized my nail is not i didn't clip it that well anyway um friend or family member could be a love interest or a spouse um you know take your pick you know your story better than i do if i put oh i got lucky because that could have turned into a hangnail anyway so this is you. You're giving and you're giving and you're giving and you get nothing for it. You get nothing for it. Five of Swords. Five of Swords usually talks about conflict with other people, but as we see here uh, in this particular depiction with this deck, this knight, this warrior is, is on the ground. Oh wait, no, there's a shadowy figure in the background. My bad. But this person is most prominent. So I feel as though maybe historically, maybe not historically, what's the best word? 
um, in the distant past. You may have been in contention with somebody. You may have been in conflict with someone. And as they walk away, you're still finding yourself struggling or, or in some type of conflict. Could be internal conflict, conflict with the self, could be passive aggressive conflict with this person. But ultimately, the story of the Five of Swords Taurus is mm, not really a win. Like this person might walk off, you know, you might have at some point called them on their shit. It seems that you never contribute as much as I do. Every time I offer something up, you just take it and you don't, you know, give me anything back for my efforts. Could be a boss. Could have, could have been you were working under the table or, you know, whatever way. No judgment, of course. And it feels like where you expected, where you were possibly well within your rights to expect someone to take care of you or to make sure you were provided for or to at least offer themselves, again, in kind, the way that you offered to them, money, time, effort, things that we value with pentacles, love, okay? I don't usually go the route of love with pentacles, but because it's the six of pentacles and I just feel it in, in some of your vibe, in some of your guys' energy, it's like I offered my love and my affection to you and you didn't respond in kind. You didn't give it back to me. You just took it for granted, right? And the thing about the Six of Pentacles is you and whoever this is, is, is applying to, you expect to get what you gave, but it never happened. So you may have called someone on their shit, said, listen, this is not fair to me. I'm stopping this or we need to stop this interaction or I'm going to the authorities, whatever, whatever the conversation was, because this feels very like yesterday, not yesterday <laughs> as in it did happen yesterday. Maybe in some of your cases it did, but it feels yesterday in the sense of like, it's not a part of your present moment. It might inform your present moment, but you're not actually dealing with this at the moment. Okay. Does that make sense? Your past. Another way to say that is your past. <laughs> um, and so you might have been victorious in, 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 in sort of declaring what you would and would not do or what you would and would not accept, but you don't feel like a winner. You know, Taurus doesn't like that. Taurus doesn't like to cut people off. Taurus doesn't like to, to give people, you know, the brunt of Taurus especially if you love a person, especially if you respect someone, especially if you want to have some type of connection with them, no matter you know what I'm talking about, boss, lover, brother, sister, whatever your relationship is. If you value the person, if you feel that there's something that you guys are meant to share together in experience, uh, in exchange, in a loving relationship, whatever, you don't like to, to, to walk away from that or to force you just don't like it. This is not something that you've liked to to have experienced. You're not a fan, okay? And I don't know, know many people who would be a fan of this, but it's like particularly like knock the, the wind out of your sails. Like this guy, even though the person in the distance is walking off without any swords and this person has all the, all the accoutrement of what a, what a knight needs to be successful in their job, they would rather not be victorious in this way. So you might be holding on to your money. You might have all the love and affection in the world for for whatever, but because it's not being shared and, you know, Taurus can be a giving sign. Taurus can be loving in those ways, or, or, or at least that's how you display uh, affection for people, okay? So you're not happy to have put this on the shelf. You might be super hurt because of the person that 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 walked away or who you told to get out because some of you might have gone that route just get the hell on out of here right um but again i feel like that's contextually the past okay um what else happens for taurus show me yeah so you heal you're healing and it's really not you for a loop but you're healing right star card Aquarian energy, major account for Aquarius. You could be dealing with Aquarius, but you don't have to be. Um, I feel you're healing. I feel you're gaining new perspective and enlightenment. I think some of you might be semi new to tarot, not just my channel, but just tarot in general or anything in this uh, realm. So Reiki, uh, psychics and mediums, you know, numerology, whatever you're taking a taking a gander at. You might not be studying it because I think that 
Aquarian energy, air sign energy, is interested in studying and intellectualizing and becoming more informed, but Aquarius is kind of, you know, loosey-goosey with it, or select, let's say selective, right? So maybe you're not so into tarot, even though you're here watching my channel, thank you very much, <laughs> but you might be more into understanding astrology, right? And tarot and astrology in many circles overlaps. In other circles, these are two distinct principles and they shouldn't blend. But for me and my purposes, they absolutely blend. And again, I thank you for being here. But more to the point, you are focused on self and getting things right with you. Get in some of your cases getting right with God, okay? Um, and that's for like a very select few. I don't, I don't view the star card to be necessarily religious, but it is quite spiritual. Um, so some of you are possibly going back and studying, you know, your holy books, studying, you know, the religious path that you used to walk or that you've always walked, but because you feel so lost or so um, out of sorts over everything we were previously discussing, this is super uh, important to you. And I think this is more your now moment. Uh, or your soon-to-be future, if, if some of you are still going through what we were discussing before. You're all on different points in, in this trajectory, okay? But um, there's also this, like, refresher. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, so you see that bird? What kind of bird is that? I'm not, I'm not good with birds, and I know it's not a pelican, but they want me to say pelican. I know this is not a pelican. I'm not, I'm not that terrible with birds. But maybe some of you have some affection towards birds, or you want to go somewhere where you can see exotic birds. I think I said that when I was shuffling something about traveling. If you're traveling, take me with you. <laughs> so some of you might be going places seeing animals you've never seen before, particularly birds, or you might have a refresher with an animal. Uh, you might get a new dog or, you know, get a new turtle, whatever. Uh, but there's this communing with animals or a particular animal that's very healing for you. So for some of you, maybe you got knocked on your ass in a relationship. You know, I'm not trying to make light of it. It could, it could have been so ridiculously terrible. And so in some of your cases, narcissistic because, you know, it's very very typical that someone who's into this space, into this type of, uh, I would say this is like self-work, self-healing, right? Tarot. That's how I use it. Um, but whatever. Most people who are into this kind of stuff, or not most people, many people in this space tend to be partnered up with or, or attracted into their lives narcissistic people. And if you didn't know, if you haven't noticed the trend, narcissistic tendencies and people are being exposed left and right. And that is being purged from our, I don't want to say from our consciousness, but I think it's being purged in a lot of our shared collective experience. If, if you are doing the work that I'm doing, and I'm not doing it, you know, I'm not acing it, by the way. <laughs> but Taurus, if you're kind of in, in, in my per the way that I view this, it's all about elevating, right? Elevating, 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 right? Raising vibration. So as that vibration rises, the low vibe has to go. And if that's attitudes that you hold, if it's beliefs that you hold, if it's people in your life, whether they're near and dear or virtual strangers on the street, people that you only see, you know, in media, that will be the, that will be the road that's, that, that, uh, that, that this whole, journey we're all walking on that that will be the road that we're all walking on so what was my point in this ah yes <laughs> so that was my long long way of saying that after going through the ringer over here with these previous two cards i see some of you retreat to like a home base and it might literally be like i said with the travel card some of you might go back to your family home and a lot of times you know people in the family home they have a family pet so you might go back to your mom and dad's house or your mom's house whoever you live with whoever you grew up with right and there might be you know that old trusty dog that's you know barking at you as you pull up into the driveway woof 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 that's my tourist friend woof 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 i'm so happy to see them but this there's this communal energy with an animal or people or places that feel like home to you. And that's the thing about the Aquarian energy and star energy. It is always looking for home. It is always looking for the destined path. It is always looking for that far off star where 
intuitively this character that's depicted on this card knows where they belong. I know I belong here, right? So you may have gone off and experienced the big city, had a big, you know, big time job and you got knocked on your ass. You may have lost that job or you just weren't treated well. And so you go home and you know that your parents or your family are going to support you. You, see, you get what I mean? Uh, and if it's not going home to your childhood home, it could literally be, be going home to your own home. You might have this job still and it might be, you know, every day, Monday to Friday, it's, it's hell on earth to go experience that. But when you walk home, you feel like you're in your sanctuary and this is a healing time for you, okay? So that's the long and the short of it. You're healing yourself at this moment and I, I sense that on one hand, <laughs> I see, okay, on one hand it's working, on another hand you're like, what the fuck am I doing, right? <laughs> that's so funny. Because uh, when I'm talking, I'm not looking at this board. I have no idea what's down there. Um, so on one hand, things are going well. On one hand, you feel in control of yourself or certain of what you're doing. I know that in this space or at this time, I have to take care of myself. I have to prioritize my my health and my wellness, my well-being, my stability, whatever. And that's the right choice to make. So on one hand, you get it. On the other hand, you're kind of like, but can I be sure? What if this person comes back? Or what if, what if I made a mistake? What if I was being too, too, too strict or too, too severe with them? Was it was, you know, there's, there's, there is a bit of second guessing and, or more traditional to what this was, what this card talks about is just being like, what's, what's good for me going forward? What decisions actions, choices must I make to get to what I want, right? Um, so I think you're certain that you need time to heal. I think you're certain that things need to be sort of uh, recalibrated in your life. Ah, okay. So think of it this way. It's sort of like when you have a car problem and it's that check engine light, right? Now, <laughs> when that light comes on, from what I've seen and read about, it could mean a multitude of things, right? I, and I'm no car aficionado. I don't know the lingo and all that stuff. I, I pay a professional to take care of my car, right? <laughs> I'm like, you, you, you guys have the knowledge. I'm just here with the, with the problem, right? So it's like that. This whole situation turned your check engine light on, but you don't know if it's the oil you don't know if it's the cylinders. You don't know if it's the, the, the fan belt. You don't know what it is. But you know something's wrong in your engine. So you need proper diagnosis. Now, does that mean if the car is your body, go to a doctor? Sure, that makes sense. If the car is your, your emotions or your mind or a combination of the two, see a therapist or a counselor. Sure, do some meditation. Do some self-work. Okay, whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever you, you believe uh, is going to get you there. However, I think that might be the issue, especially for those where it's mental and emotional or a combination of the two. Is this, a, is this something I need to go and see a therapist about? Is this something I can handle on my own? Is this just, you know, could I just get the fix that I need having a Cabernet on, the, on a Zoom call with my best friend who lives in Georgia? Who the fuck knows? Like, I think you don't know exactly what the diagnosis is, where the problem is, or how to fix it yet, okay? I feel you're determined to find it, because again, with the star card, that, that star that's above this, this person's head, is a, it's like the bat signal. It, and, and the funny thing about the bat signal is like, if you think about it, how the hell does Batman, well, I guess he's like, you know, super smart and everything like that, but it's just like, it's like this, uh, like if you literally had a spotlight pointing it in the sky to trace it back to whatever rooftop, like he never gets it wrong. He, he's never like one or two rooftops off. It's like, oh shit, I got to go two buildings over and then I'm going to meet up with Commissioner Gordon. Like, y you see what I mean? So it's like that. There's a signal in you, there's something in you or, or in your vicinity that you know needs fixing. You just might not know how to approach fixing it or, 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 or finding a resolution. Or you just might not know exactly which area it is. You know, especially, 
you know, and I hate to harp on it because it's a little cliched, but it is also true. <laughs> and because, you know, of my Aquarian moon, I try not to be cliched, but, <laughs> and I fail all the time. <laughs> but anyway, um, when you're dealing with narcissistic people who might be gaslighting you, you're going to be knocked in, in your area of certainty, of, of resolute knowingness. I know this is the right thing for me to do. No, dealing with narcissists, dealing with people that gaslight, dealing with people who, who in general blow smoke, it is going to confuse you, right? So there is a little confusion here, but I think you'll be able to handle it. Let's see what else happens. Yes, progress. Yes, 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 progress, at least. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's kind of a given because life is not stagnant. Nothing stands still, not for a very long time, at least. Although, time is relative. Standing still for a day is torturous for somebody. Standing still for 10 years is a, is a cakewalk for somebody else. Anyway, three of wands. You, you, know, you know this is yes. Yes. You're not at a crossroads. Not, not officially. But I feel you're in a place, because this falls between, this three of wands falls between the six of pentacles and the star card. I think you're in this reflective mode. I think you're in this trying to gain perspective. See the forest for the trees. You know, the saying is you can't see the forest. No, you want to see the forest for the trees. You don't want illusions. So if, okay, thank you. In the situation where some of you have been dealing with toxic people, if not narcissists, toxic people, people who were just dishonest, people who were greedy, whatever. Part of you, Taurus, is like, am I to blame? Be careful with that. Be careful with that. Okay? But that's kind of how you're casually thinking about it. Am I to blame for this? Did I cause this? Not in the sense of you gave someone a reason to treat you badly. You gave you gave someone a reason to steal money from you or steal time from you. No. That's 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 not no so be careful with how you think of it but that's kind of your approach what is it about me that made this happen to me why what how am i the cause or how do if you if not the cause how do i factor into what i'm experiencing now maybe that's how you should think about it how am i the how am i factoring into what i'm experiencing now that's, see, that's, that's a little bit more balanced than, you know, this whole what did I do wrong kind of aspect, right? Because no one person or no one event is the single cause of anything else. Every, you know, there have to be uh, contributing factors or contributing energies and efforts and, and, and perspectives and all that stuff. So you're calling into question what happened here. How did I show up here in the Six of Pentacles in reverse? How did I show up here? How am I showing up over here, 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 here? You're, you're wanting to gain this perspective before you move forward. You expect, because mm -hmm, that's the other thing about the Three of Wands, you expect there to be progress. You expect there to be some type of development in your life. That's very good. I think that's relatively healthy, right? Again, life is stagnant for... Life overall is not stagnant, but there are moments where we perceive that we're stuck in a rut or that we can't get out of something or we can't see ourselves move forward. And I think you soon will be embracing this, okay, well, what's next? What's next? It's like one foot in the door, one foot out the door. It's like that, if you think about it, <laughs> This is so interesting because I, I, I can see it clearly, but now I have to like explain what I'm saying. Whenever you walk through a doorway, cross over the threshold of, of, of a doorway, at some point, one foot is inside and one foot is outside, right? And there's like this bisectional, if you could look through the door frame uh, across it, you would see that your body might be pretty literally cut in half or be in two places being in two places at once, right? And that's what this feels like. One foot in the past, maybe, or one foot firmly in the present, and your one foot that's stretching to the outside is like, well, where's the step? What, 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 what foundation, what, what flooring am I going to put my foot down on that's going to catch me and that I'm going to walk out onto, right? So there is this concern or there is this eye on the future 
but it's still kind of foggy because you haven't been able to fully see the forest for the tree for the trees yet okay um i feel that's coming i feel that's developmental over the next few weeks or months for most of you i don't think you're going to be dragging this out because this feels like you know something you went through for a while and this i think the transitionary period might be a little longer than what you're used to or what you what you have desired but say la vie right final card in your main spread is the nine of pentacles so for those where this was a relationship situation a marriage in some cases and you don't have cards of marriage but because of the history it maybe felt like a marriage maybe it was common law maybe you were with someone like i said 10 years but you never married them i don't know but it feels like for those where this is a relationship <clears throat> Some of you are definitely getting into your single ladies energy and it doesn't have to be so triumphant like the Beyonce song. You know, if you, if you, if you, was it? If, oh, I can't even remember those lyrics. If you liked it, then you should have put, yeah, if you liked it, then you should have put a ring on it. Maybe that was the, the camel that broke the, or the straw, <laughs> the camel, my God, the straw that broke the camel's back. We've been, we've been dancing around this marriage question for so long. And every time you bring it up, they retract. Every time you suggest it, they, they shut the conversation down. That's ridiculous. And we're over that, right? So beyond that, single ladies, and it doesn't have to apply to only females, there is just this striking sense of me. Me. F spotlight on Taurus, right? Me. One, one man show, one woman show, off Broadway, me. And it's about putting yourself as the star in your own play, in your own show, in your own song or whatever. Some of you might be going that creative route. I'm not, again, Pentacles is not something that I would immediately associate with creative uh, endeavors, but that could work for some of you. Um, and maybe it's coming after, you know, Taurus is like that. Uh, not all of you, but many of you are very much, you defer to the other person or you defer to others, period. You want, you want to satisfy them. By satisfying them, you are satisfied. By giving to them, you are satisfied. By putting their needs before yours, you're satisfied. And now that that person or that situation, that circumstance isn't here anymore, we're closing the door on that, or at least we're walking away from it, or we're detaching from it in some type of way. Now it's this focus on me. How do I prioritize me? How do I treat and serve myself? How do I honor myself? How do I please myself? In all the ways, creatively, professionally, sexually, okay? And, you know, and I'm not being funny, but, like, some of you are like, I haven't been single in a minute, and I'm not ready to date, but a man or a woman has needs. We, we have a word for that, and we have, a, we have an action for that. Go to town, my friend. Bust, bust out whatever tools and, and toys that you need, right? S but I'm serious, like career, relationships, health, wellness, whatever area. Putting yourself in the driver's seat, putting yourself center stage, that is what's happening here. And some of you haven't been center stage in a long time, if not ever. And that could also contribute to this, I don't know, I don't know what to do, or what's the diagnosis, what's wrong, how come I don't, you know, the check engine light is on, but I don't know exactly what I need to do to fix it. Focus on you, right? Take a page out of your fellow uh, fix signs book, Leo, and put a little <laughs> ego in your tank, you know? Your dipstick on, <laughs> on ego is empty. It's got black oil all over it. You need you need an ego oil change, maybe, right? <laughs> um, beyond that, singlehood and, and focus on self. In other cases, this is like beautifying yourself. Some of you, for, for lack of a better word, you feel kind of ugly. And that's not a knock. I'm not telling you that you're ugly. I, don't, I can't see you. You can see me sometimes, but it's not about that. You feel ugly. You don't feel attractive. So some of you will be putting prioritize or she pr <laughs> putting prioritize my god i can't talk today putting emphasis on making yourself physically attractive not necessarily to to catch a date or to 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 find someone who's willing to sleep with you or anything like that i really feel like some of you just like you haven't had confidence in yourself <laughs> 
Okay, so there's like that trope of like the married man or woman who's like been married for so long and then after they're divorced, like they look like a schlub and they just like have to, you know, go out and buy a whole new wardrobe and like they might enlist a friend. It's just like, so when's the last time you bought like a new bra and you like check like the tag? There's <laughs> like some old like department store that doesn't exist anymore and they're like girl you need a whole new makeover something like that so some of you are literally doing a physical makeover yay go for it i support that outcome tours for august is six of cups so i think oh boy look at me changing like changing not changing my words but it like slapped me right in the face some of you are going to come to this interesting conclusion or this interesting revelation about a soulmate, period, okay? <laughs> They're like, period, but explain. And I'm like, okay, fine. Because some of you have been wondering, my connection with a person, is it because we're soulmates? Yes. Here comes Jay's, you know, qualification and, you know, <laughs> in parentheses, a soulmate is not always a pleasant experience, Taurus. A soulmate is not always someone who... who who exist in your life for a long time, if not your entire life or, or your entire adult life, if it's romantic, right? Soulmate relationships are complicated by nature, right? Because you are the same, like these two lemurs, you're the same species, you recognize each other, but you're two separate entities or you're two separate beings. So you're not always going to be on the same page. You're not always going to want the same things or behave in the same manner because you're two individuals, right? So there will be days where you look at this person or you had looked at this person, especially if it's that, that person that you walked away from you or that you've had this complication with, right? You might look at that person and there are days where you're just like, they're the best thing on earth. And then you look at them the next day and you're like, oh my God, I hate you. Get out of my life. That's not all soulmate relationships, but that can happen, right? And so some of you, in, in trying to get the diagnosis of what the hell's been going on in your life, you're like, is this my soulmate? In this, you know, weighing it out in your, in, in your mind or, or going back and forth in your mind in some type of way, oscillating. Is this person my soulmate? That's why I don't like to use it casually. I, you know, if you've been with me for a while, you, you know my speeches about soulmates. Don't get it twisted. It's not sunshine, rainbows, and lollipops all the time. So, some of you are going to come to that conclusion. That person is or was a soulmate to me. And notice I said a, not my or the soulmate. It's not singular. It's not only one. You have many, right? Um, so that recognition is important for some of you in other cases where it's not a soulmate or it might be a certain type of soulmate, karmic partner, twin flame, whatever you have. Okay. Um, <laughs> you can qualify it on your own research. I'm not here to give it to you because this is a general, so it's going to go so many different ways. But the point is kinship, recognizing the importance of that connection, the importance of why that person came into your life even if it was just for a, a season, even if it was just for a few weeks or a few months or a few years, even if it wasn't romantic. That was my boss. I can't stop thinking about my boss and not in a sexy, ooh, naughty fantasy type way. Like, no, that person ran me ragged and I hate their guts. But then they also gave me a gleaming recommendation and they threw me a wonderful going away party. What the fuck? The whole time they were like abusive towards me but they told me I was one of the greatest workers they ever had. That's that gaslighting shit. That's that, that's that confusing toxicity shit, right? There's a lesson in there for you, baby. Go ahead and get it. All right? So that's your... For many of you, that's going to be... <laughs> like, in conclusion, in summation, this was some type of soul commitment or soul contract or soul connection you had with a person. You might still have it. You might still have this person in your life. I don't know. That's for you. I don't, you know, and it doesn't, it's, it doesn't bode anything on the, really on the reading, whether you're still in contact with this person. But that's, that's in many of your cases, that's the outcome of it. Yes, soulmate. Yes. <laughs> but with, with, <laughs> with a warning on it. Uh, your overall energy <laughs> in August, Taurus, is the Ten of Cups. So, the whole shebang. 
that we've talked about today has been, uh, I don't, it's such a strange word. They're like eternal. All right. Eternal happiness. That might, that might mean something to, to, to some of you that might be, you know, enlightening or, or affirming for someone, but that's not traditional <laughs> uh, interpretations of the Ten of Cups, but I will say it because of, you know, the empathic nature of my, my whole reading, uh, the way that I read tarot. But um, more to the point, Ten of Cups is about long-term happiness. Uh, it is about uh, sort of making a happy home or setting up shop uh with a particular person in a particular way that makes us happy and fulfills us and, and gives us contentment. However, this 10 is like a culmination point. And what happens at a culmination point, either you culminate and you wrap up what there was and you kind of move on to the next thing, or you wrap up certain aspects of what there is between you and another person, and then you start again on some new ground, right? So this could have been, you know, again, and I'm speaking mostly because in, in these terms because it's a 10. So some of you, you may be wrapping up the portion of your life where you guys live separately, something like that. I'm not seeing anything come together, but I'm just using it to kind of demonstrate the point of the culmination where something ends, but it's not actually an ending, right? Just an aspect of something ends. So there are points in relationships where we, we stop being two single individuals that live in separate homes and we merge homes, right? And then what's the classic trajectory after that? After that, if not before, there's a wedding. And if not before or after that, there's children. And then not before or something. And then usually after that, there might be career changes, maybe another house change, and then retirement and all that good stuff. Like there's, there's incremental ending before the actual ending of, you know, six feet under. So it's, you know what, what has ended, either a facet or an aspect of a relationship or a time in your life has ended or the actual dissolving of a relationship has come about. It, it will be different for all of you. But I think you might be kind of uh, romanticizing the happier times. And, you know, Taurus is like that, Venu uh, ruled by Venus, very much like into the, the happier times and, 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 and the, the quality time that you had with people. And if you're losing some aspect of that, it's going to suck. You're not going to enjoy that. Okay? Taurus, that is your reading for August. If you liked it, like button is down below. Go ahead and hit that for me. If you want to leave a comment, let me know how this resonated in your life. That would be super cool. Feel free to share and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Again, if you want a personal, that information is down in the description box. Uh, Taurus, again, I'll go live on the 8th for Leo. If you want to spy on them, that's totally cool. If you just want to stop by and say hi in the chat, uh, I will be doing that uh, probably at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, more specifically, in case you wanted to know when not just the day, but the hour. Feel free to join me then. Uh, I'll be back soon, my friends, with the mid-August readings. Uh, during vacation, I might do a little something, something. Maybe I'll do a little something, something during my vacation. I'll let you know, or you'll just see it as it pops up here on YouTube, okay? All right, Taurus, thank you guys so, so much for watching. For watching excuse me. I really do appreciate it. Take care.